can do it better. Tell them from the bishop, Happy New Year. I, I tell them it's me saying to them, Happy New Year. Tell them your bishop is prophesying to you. Uh, engage them, your bishop is prophesying to you. 2024, you are right for God's restoration. Uh -uh. Tell them again, 2024, you are right for God's restoration. All you need to do is to realign yourself. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I am going to realign myself. Amen. I love you. You better be seated. God bless you. Amen. What is our season? Uh -uh, I didn't hear you. What's our season? Amen. I want to build a little bit. Thank you, praise team. God bless you. God bless you. I need time. You are ripe for God's restoration. You know, David said in Psalms, just before I get into the word, Psalms 80, verse 3, NIV. And David says, Restore us, O God. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Think about that. That we may be saved in the year 2024. Sometimes we just think of being saved as salvation that we confess. But you can be saved from many. And David continues and in verse 7 and 9, 19, they are also similar. He says, restore us, God Almighty. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved this year. That nothing is going to go wrong this year. Even if things will go wrong, God, you will still come and save us. You come and salvage us. Verse 19 says the same. Restore us, O Lord God. Almighty, make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. So I want to pray for you even before we start our message this morning that may God hear your prayer for restoration. May God hear your prayer for open door. May God hear your prayer for realignment in the name of Jesus. The same Psalms 80 verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. It says, Hear us, old shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth. Hallelujah. Tell somebody seated next to you, God is going to shine in your life this year. Aha, uh -huh. tell them again, God is going to shine in your life this year. In the name of Jesus. So this year is a year of uh, open door. And we know our scripture. Um, Revelation 3 verse 8, New King James Version. And this is a message. Now listen, this message... Is a message to the church. I knew of the church. And this message was spoken to the churches in the first century. And this message is still relevant to the body of Christ in the 21st century. The things that were happening in the church in the first century are the things that are happening in the church in the 21st century. So the Lord comes 
And he says, I'm the one who holds the keys of David. And he speaks to the churches. But before he gets to this church that we have picked as part of our theme, he speaks first to a church in Ephesus. And the church had departed from the first love. So he calls that a loveless church. He speaks to another church, the Simna church. And it was a persecuted church. He speaks to Pagamos, a church that was compromised. And then he speaks to Theatra, the church that was corrupt. Corrupt church. But I want you to see something. When God, when the Lord is speaking to these churches, he's not condemning them. You and I, we are the one who are used to condemning. We condemn. But him, he does not condemn. He just tell them, repent. Because if you don't, I might come and do something that you will regret. Hallelujah. He comes to another church. Uh, the, the, the church in Sardis. And it's a dead church. Dead. Dead. And he said, me kufa. Ata kiroho aina. He me dead. Hmm. And then he comes to this church of Philadelphia. <laughs> and he says, in verse 8, the Philadelphia church, and that's the one that we have picked, he says, I know your works. Najua kazi, najua mambo yako yote. Najua. Najua, mimi ndi mwenyezi mungu Najua But see In other words He is, con he is commending This church Even when He says I have opened Before you an open door And no one can shut it He still says For you have Little strength this is a small, tiny church. A church that is not famous. A church that is... <laughs> a church that is... It, it doesn't have any, anything. I, I mean, it doesn't have much. He says, you have little strength. But that little strength is the one I'm looking for. Because yes, you have little strength, but you have kept my word. You have kept my word. You have not denied my name. You have not compromised. Hallelujah. And I want us to look at a few things here that is happening. Because this year we are going to work on what the Lord is saying. And finally he looks at church number seven. The Laodicean church. The Laodicean church thought they were rich. <laughs> but it was a lukewarm church. It was cold. It was neither hot, it was neither cold. And yet this is the very church that they thought they were rich. And he says, uh-uh, you are not rich. Because the areas that you think you're successful, to me, you are not successful. The areas that you think that they are okay, before me they are not okay. <laughs> I wish you were either one of them. Yeah? Either you are cold 
and you remain cold or whether you are cold i i wish you would not compromise i i, I, w- I wish you would not be a switzerland one foot here the other foot there that's the church number seven and those seven churches represents the churches that we have today and i'm not here to condemn anybody but I'm here to tell you that God has showed me something that if we can pick it this year, Living Faith Ministries, we will go somewhere. Now I want you to know that an open door, an open door, and I begin my preaching now, an open door is an opportunity that God is giving you and I so that we can be effective witnesses of the gospel. Some of you, I ask you a question, when was the last time that you witnessed to somebody? When was the last time that you invited somebody to come to church? And this year we are going to do Bible study. In this book of Revelation. We are going to come here. We are going to do exposition. We are going to do exegesis. We are going to do whatever you call it. Amenutic or militics. We are going to do them. So that we will return to a place. That God. Will begin to be pleased with us. And just before I get to this point, number one, open door. What about closed doors? In the year 2024, I thank God for open doors, but I also thank God for shut door. <laughs> I say that again. I thank God for open door, but I also thank him for closed doors. How many times did God close a door to spare you from something that you are not able to handle? But you're still complaining, you're still murmuring. But if you have gotten through that door, you'd be an accident today. (laughs) God salvaged some of you by shutting certain doors last year. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. He spared you. He protected you from something that we are not able to handle. And when God is talking that I know myself even as your pastor. I know he protected me from things that I was not able to handle last year. And I thank him for that. This year, I want to ask you, do not force doors to open. Because you are not the door opener. You are just a person to pass through an open door. But don't try to open a door. I say it again, don't force doors open. Don't force a door open in the area of marriage. Be sure, be very sure that that's the door that God has opened for you. I didn't hear an amen. So don't force the door open. And then I also want to say to you, don't freak out about doors that are being closed. But rather, trust God. Don't force doors open. Neither don't freak. Don't shy away. Don't dread when some doors are shut. But rather, trust God. Mm -hmm. closed doors can bring an end to roadblocks 
It can bring an end to barriers. Closed doors can also be a, a gift in life. Can create opportunities for gifts from God. There's a great woman in the Bible. Her name was Kori Ten Bull. Kori Ten Bull. Boom. And she said, and I quote, she said, hold everything in your hand lightly. This is Kori Ten Bull. She was, it's not in the Bible. I'm quoting somebody. She was a Jewish woman. She went through a hard time, but she loved God. And she's a woman of faith. So this is what she says. That hold everything in your hand lightly. Usishike hivi na nguvu. Eh? Kwa sababu... Saile mungu atajaribu kufungua Iyo mkono Unaweza umia eh? So she says Hold everything in your hands Lightly Otherwise it hurts When God Pries Your fingers open Prize is to force open. Huh? Is to exact that it will be opened. It might dislocate one finger. It might dislocate a thumb. You know? So, um, are you learning something? In the year 2024, usikwe ni mkonongamu. Mine, mine, mine. Hmm? Jesus holds the key of authority. The open door represents opportunities from God. God will open the right door for you. Which no man can shut. So we are seeing here, ladies and gentlemen, that open door represents an opportunity from God. We are a people of faith. We don't walk by sight. When others are saying, oh, the economy is hard, the economy is uh -uh. that's not our language. Which report shall you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Because the Lord remains to be our shepherd. The one who leads us. The way he led Joseph like a flock. He is going to do the same in the year 2024. Hallelujah. So if God... Open door represents opportunities. I want to declare that some foundations are being shaken even right now. Some foundations are being shaken. Prison doors will open. And for this door to open, praise like Paul. Praise like Paul and Cyrus in the prison situation. You know, I've seen the people in church when uh, circumstances and uh, issues of life come, is that they become dull. Huh? You walk like a defeated chicken. Huh? You walk like a chicken that will rain on. Hmm? You forget that you are not made of cheap materials. You forget that the Lord 
is your shepherd. You shall want nothing. You forget that there is a host of army from heaven that guards you by night. You forget that God says that a thousand may come one way, a ten thousand from the other side, but none will come near your dwelling place. You forget it and you look at the mountain. You forget that God is bigger than any mountain that can come your way. God is greater than any valley that can stand before you. God is greater than any gates that can be uh, stand before you to stop you. Hallelujah. And I say, like Meguna, come baby, come. Because the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. It is when trouble comes that we can see the power of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that there is nothing that has happened to man. Huh? But only things that are common. What we go through are common. They have happened to somebody. It is happening to you so that personally you will know how to deal with it because you are not a yo-yo. You are not a carbonic copy. You are an original of God. You are an eternal excellence. The joy to many generations. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are a victor and not a victim. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. So these opportunities, these open doors this year, they will open our opportunity. And please don't misjudge the word. I said that there will be storms. But in the midst of the storms, there will be a God who delivers you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember that Jesus is the door when we talk about the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and he will go in and out in a fine pasture. LFM, I want to tell you this year, if you go through Jesus, who is the door, you will, listen to what the scripture is saying, you will be saved and you will go in and out and find pasture. I declare to somebody at the sound of my voice, you will find pasture in 2024. You will find divine provision in 2024. You will find provision. Because Jesus is the door. These doors that we are talking about, they are not imaginary doors. And God desires. Listen. Some of these doors will open because God wants us to attain a new level of maturity. Remember, we are coming from fruitfulness. Amen. Amen. I don't know, if we did not go through fruitfulness last year, what would happen? Maybe this church will be dead and completely gone. <laughs> but even after the purging and after the pruning, something remained. And that's something re that remained that is small. That's what God is exalting. That's what God is commending. And God wants us to attain a new level of maturity and new strength. New maturity and new strength. God desires that we grow in a faith. I love the testimony of Sister Winnie. Hmm? They tell you you have cancer. But she had faith. And it was not the faith of a pastor. She had faith. And that's why many people who came to Jesus, Jesus would pray for them and he would tell them, your faith has made you whole. It is your faith, 
child of God that will make you whole. Not the faith of a pastor, not a faith of a church leader, but the faith that God has put within you. Hallelujah. So this year, God wants us to grow in faith. Hallelujah. As we realign. Huh? Faith so that we can reach out to the world that is lost. Jesus commended the Philadelphia church. He acknowledged their little strength. Labda kujangi church maramob. Labda una vipawa za roho mtakatifu. Ah, unafanya shaba ba ba ba, watu wanaanguka. Ah, chinda bara hando. Ah, miujiza. Maybe you don't have that. Praise the name of the Lord. He acknowledged their literal strength. Wapendwa hata ikiwa nguvu ni kidogo namna hii, Mungu anajua and he recognizes that little strength. You don't have to be a man of faith and power for the hour. You just have to be who you are. God is interested with you the way you are. And God wants to walk with you with the little resources that you may have. Or more resources that God has put into your hands. God is not a respecter of persons. God does not compare you with that person that you're sitting next to. God does not match your Christianity with the things that we possess in life. Because God is a God of a heart. This church had nothing. It was not famous church. Maybe politicians did not even go to this church. They did not go to take donations in this church. <laughs> uh, maybe this church struggled when it came to the time of finances. But they went through hard time. But they never denied the name of God. We don't proclaim him because of the money that we possess or the tithes that you give to us. I don't love God because of gifts that he gives to me. I love him because of who he is. Even with nothing, I can still follow him. Like I used to say 20 years ago, I have come this far not to look back. Hallelujah. I have come this far. I'm not going to compromise. Hallelujah. Even when they put a gun on my head, I'll still not deny his name. <laughs> so this year, living faith, he does not want you to live in that little strength. From today, you have 51 weeks because one week is already gone. And in a year, we have 52 weeks. So you can say in the next 51 weeks, every week I'll be involved in the place of prayer. And the church call for prayer, I'll be there. And listen to me, some of you, you work in odd hours. Tell us which hour you want to be available. Because corporate prayer is very important. Corporate prayer is very important. We impact each other. And God releases blessings. Because where there is unity, God commands a blessing. Strive to grow in these 51 weeks that are left. 
try strive to grow in strength and new grace strength and new grace grow and be strong in faith raise the dead if you have to dead businesses can be raised by women of god who have a new strength and a new grace things that have died in our homes can be resurrected again because of the new grace that god is giving us in your little strength god's favor will be upon you i didn't hear an amen, amen. i said in your little strength God's favor will be upon you so that your enemies will be forced to acknowledge it. I say your enemies will be forced to acknowledge that little strength that you have. Waliachwa na kidogo, but your enemy will acknowledge that that little has the favor of God. Hallelujah. And God is in it. And something is happening. God desires living faith to see change. A time of separation. A time of change. And change is always painful. But change is possible. Change is possible change is possible. Just like God told Joshua, living faith, God is saying in Joshua chapter 1 verse 7, only be strong and very courageous this year that you may observe to do according to all the laws which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from eight to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Do not turn. Do not listen to another voice. Listen to the voice of your shepherd. Listen to the voice of your spiritual leader. He has an authority from God. Listen to him. And do not point fingers on your spiritual leader. It is dangerous. And it's not manipulation when I say that. Hmm? Praise the name of Jesus. Wachani na watumishi wa Mungu wakuwe ni watumishi wa Mungu. Let God deals with his servants. Remember the story of Miriam when he began to judge his brother. Don't judge. Don't judge. Don't judge. And I'm not a curser. I never curse anybody. God brought you to me as a blessing. I'll never curse anybody. But neither don't you curse me. Because I've worked day and night trying my level best to do what I know best. Hallelujah. Some people did Madarao a couple of years ago. Now they are calling me back. Eh? And I'm asking them, why are you calling me? You left me with Madarao. You told me I'm not a father. Hmm? Let us live in peace. God has opened a door. Hallelujah. Let us live in peace. Hmm? Tuache kupigana. Sisi ni watu wa Mungu. Hmm? As we are fighting, people are perishing. People are going to hell. Amen. 
I'm thinking of the mission this year and I'm looking for a team that will be ready to go for mission. Praise the name of Jesus. And from next Sunday, I'm bringing back the treasury box here. Any extra money that you give towards that treasury box to be dedicated for missions. We also want to spend more time building our churches that we have planted so that they will not die, so that they will stand and reach out. Hallelujah. We'll build our regional churches in Uganda. We'll build our churches in Namibia. We'll build our regions in Ethiopia mission. We will build South Sudan. This is not the time to concentrate on minor things. It's the time to pursue the assignments that God gave us. So that box will be here. Hallelujah. We need to buy a truck this year for mission. We need to buy a new PA system for mission. Praise the name of Jesus. We need to restore things that we need to restore because God is open the door. I say it in the Kesha for some of you who are not there that storms will come. But God will be with you to move you beyond what to try to stop you. We are square mtu saile shida inakuja mnakutana kama wa Kristo kama intercessors mnaomba against that thing. Don't be like Peter. Ah Peter started praying and Jesus told him I have prayed for you to go through the shifting. After you have gone through the sifting, you will become so effective in salvaging other people's lives. So, usiombe ile kitu mungu anaftaka ifanyike, ifanyike. Auta kufa, sabu storm itakuja karibu na nyumba yako. Hallelujah. Storms of Water, rains will come, but they will never destroy. None of you will be destroyed. Hallelujah. None of you. None of you will die. I said none of you will die. 2024. God will release a preserving grace. Sijui kama hii message ni kipereka wapi. Hmm? 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 Preserving grace. Preserving grace. May the Lord make you a monumental pillar in the house of God. I say may God make you a monumental pillar in this house of God. I said may God make you a monumental pillar in this house. Wait, wait. Usimame na kazi ya mungu. A monumental pillar. Amen. May God raise such a person to us. Eh? So that mambo zingine tunafikiria, we we focus on the field where there are souls. Na watu ndio wanaketi, wanafikiri hizo mambo. Hmm? Hmm? Eh? Sometimes I have to walk around to see whether the compound is clean. Eh? I have to walk around to see whether the building needs repair. May God raise monumental pillars in this ministry this year. Hallelujah. Na kama hawako hapa, may God bring them through that door. In the name of Jesus. I say may God bring them through this door. 
because of faithfulness. Listen, LFM. May you never be defaced. Defaced. Yani ukue na face. <laughs> ukue na nini? Face. Ukue na structure. May you never be defaced. May you remain intact. As a child of God. As a prophecy I'm making over your life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And listen people. Get closer to your, to your servant of God. Where the anointing is. Hmm? Right now I'm celebrating some people who used to come here. <laughs> hmm? Who have been promoted and sent to other areas. Hallelujah. Steve and uh, Evelyn Moria. Eh? That's why Evelyn Amekua promoted as a bank manager. Watu wanaingia hii kanisa, wakamaliza meaka, eh? ata ijamaliza tatu, mutu wanainuliwa na kuwa manager. Uo mekaa hapo, the last 20 years. Hmm? Wengine wenyu muna criticize hile nenu inakuja. Wawa wanakuja, wanapokea. Eh? Mungu wanafungua milano. May you never become defaced because you are a child of this ministry in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I can, uh, they will come here. We pray for them and we release them. Huh? But we are still in communication. And that's our joy. Uh, people can come. Huh? Realign with our ministry within a short time. God blesses them and open great doors. That's our yako tutakusukuma, tutakusukumia. Hallelujah. Na ukikata, tutakuwa tunatembea kwako usiku, tunatembea kwa nyumba usiku, huko inje. Tuna prophesy. Eh? Moto ya mungu. In the name of Jesus. Because of your faithfulness, may you never be defaced. Kai. May you never be removed. May you never be removed. Glory to God. Elder Kagiri, unasikia, may you never be removed. Usmame, hmm? they that are planted in the house of God, they will never be removed. They will bring forth fruit in their young age. And even when wamezeeka. Usiona mtu wamezeeka umudharao. Age is just a number. Even in old age, we can still bring forth fruits. Hallelujah. Naona hata nimeeka white beards. Dio muone ni nazeeka. Hallelujah. Sijui ni hache za juu. Praise the name of Jesus. But the problem with us men, even ato kijaribu kueka kala, kuna zingine ziko kwa mapua ndani. Why, God, more than it. God will open a door. Listen to this. Ah, muta niongeze a time. Hii neno si ya dakambili. God will open a door that no enemy can shut. Can I give you counsel? Dr. Kagondo, afadhali tu, iwe tu ni mulango moja imefungwika na hakuna adui anaweza karibia iyo mulango. Let us not look for so many doors. Uh -uh. One door. One door that will bring change and transformation that no enemy can shut. A door that will leave legacy behind. A door that will make you become known in the places where people are known. Hallelujah. Because you have kept my word. Because you have been faithful. Because you have not denied my name. Listen to this LFM. Listen to me. And especially those of you who are faithful in this church. God will preserve you. 
in the hour of trial. I said God will preserve you in the hour of trial. I said God will preserve you in the hour of trial. Which is coming to the whole world. In Akuja, very soon. This hour of trial. I like that in my mother tongue. I like that so much in my mother tongue. But because of who we are, I don't know whether I'm going to read it. Hmm? I don't know whether. Hmm? I'll not read it in my mother tongue. Because I told God that this church is a national church. It's not a tribal church. Amen. Now maybe I can try and say that in Kiswahili. Kwa kuwa wewe umezingatia neno langu la kuwa na uamilivu uamilivu kamili Mimi nita kutengemeza salama wakati ule viki inayo ujia ulimwengu mzima kuwajaribu watu wote wanaoishi duniani. Hmm? Kwa Hebrews inasema Hebrew Hebrew Todwa kuhigia wadho wakwa Wago kirereria Todwa kuhigia wadho wakwa wago kirereria Nego kogitera kuma kure ihida leadena. Ihida leadena. Let me tell you, people of God, God is promising to protect you from that hour of financial crisis. from that hour of financial crisis. Kwa sababu umekuwa umevumilia. So here we are talking about uh, four things quickly and I finish now. I will not elaborate most of them. I say the number one is open door. The number two is door represents access. Doors represent access and Jesus has the key to government and authority. Nyinyi kanisa mjui nguvu yenu. You don't understand about who you are. Jesus has given you the key and the key represents government and authority. If God is talking to the church, he's also talking to this church. There is a place God wants to take us back. Daktari Kubuka, when we were building this church, we were people of faith. I was looking for a concrete mixture. And an Indian brought a brand new concrete mixture that he has brought in the city. This Indian contractor. And when he heard that I was coming to construct this church, he gave me consultancy services, consulting services. And he told me that I was not going to pay a single coin on that concrete mixer until this church was finished, all these pillars, everything, you see, were finished. 
And I asked him, why are you doing that? He said, Kazi ya mongor, sisi ya pana ripisha. Kazi ya mongor, sisi ya pana ripisha. After we finished, he packaged that 5,000. He told me, any place you will see the need of this money, you put it. This church must return to that faith. To that faith. Doctor, you can remember when we were putting up the trusses? In fact, I want God to challenge me to build another cathedral. I don't know where I'll build it. Maybe in Akuru. Maybe in a big city. When we're putting up the trusses, they said that you'll not be able to pull up trusses across the church. They are too heavy. And you need the crane. And the crane to come from Nairobi, you need to hire more than 300,000. And every day they will charge you like another 100,000. And they say, these trusses, it's not easy to put it up there. And we end, as a church, we went, we started praying. Because there is no time you're putting up a building like this and people don't. I get injured because the enemy is also looking for blood to sacrifice. And God gave me an idea. He told me, brother, get ropes and tie a rope from that balcony all the way to where you have the toilet. And the same rope, pull it to the kitchen. Let men pull on that side. And this one positioned it. And when you get to the top, let the welders do the tack welding. And once the first truss went up, in the next couple of hours, all the trusses went up. God has given this church supernatural faith your faith to your kujiringa now even though it's little God recognizes it this year let's wake up and let's do what God wants us to do hallelujah if you have an assignment do what you must do doors represents access God will help us to deal with restrictions to our access. Hello, did you hear that? God will help you to deal with restrictions. God will help you to deal with enemies that stays at the gates. We must possess the gates of our enemies. We must possess those gates. na time yangu imeenda niachie hapo m hmm? niache so if god will help you to deal with uh, every restriction so listen to this he will help you to deal with the spiritual stagnation Spiritual stagnation and shut doors can cause stagnation. Hmm? Elders, me na taka muni sa idea. Dio tuweze kufunguka akwenda na kufanya ile kazi mungu ametuita tufanya. Naomba tu muni saidie. Hmm? Because alone I cannot do it. Hmm? He opens the door for the entrance. It's a time to knock.
It's a time to knock. It's a time to knock again. Hata kama ulibisha mlango last year mara ngapi bisha tena itafunguka. Bisha. 2024 you shall progress to your next level. Hebu mwambie huyo mtu amekaa karibu nawe you shall progress to your next level. 2024 mwambie hivi 2024 an end of an era and a beginning of a new chapter in your life. God is giving this church a new access and it is time to advance time to advance points number 3 doors represents authority and like we say Jesus is the key Matthew 16 verse 19 and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven LFM women remember what i told you god has given you the keys to control the gates to release god's divine provision for his people I want to talk to you women. You are very key in a ministry. Just like women are key in a home. This ministry can explode because of you, women. Because a mother knows how to nurture a baby. Daddies are important. They are great. But women, God want to use you to propel this ministry to a next level. Don't miss your time of prayer. Come and give birth to new things. Join hands together, women, royals. Let this movement be known in every church that we have planted in this country. And in the nations where we have church plants. The last commission in God showed me that you hold the key. And behind the reservoir that has many gates. Na kifungui kwa mkono yako. Joyce kama wewe hapana tumia hiyo kifungu Mungu atakuuliza. Lucy kama hutatumia hiyo kifungu remember the person who was given the talents moja kapewa moja akaweka kwa handkerchief akabari don't bury your gift use the gift that god has given you lfm are we going to do that let's do it paul used to women Paul used women. The mother of Timothy. Akina Priscilla na akina Nani, there were women. Eh? There are some denominations that don't think that women. Listen to me, God has not given women the spirit of just childbearing. He's given you the anointing of the Holy Spirit to set the captives free. Glory to God. I'm looking for a time where we shall have our caves and you women will be going to those caves. Those are dreams. And they will come to pass one of these days. Hallelujah. And finally, the last point God was telling to this faithful church. It's a promise. Mwambie mtu ahadi promise. He says in verse 
Revelation 3 verse 10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial. We shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. So God is saying he will preserve you in the hour of trial which is coming to the whole world. In Romans 8 verse 28 we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. So God is also giving us a promise. There is a promise this year as I finish that God will sustain every family that is here in this church. I say God will sustain every family that is in this church. I say it again, God will sustain every family that is part of this church. And God is saying to some people here, He's saying this, that you went through pain, but the Lord purposed it to be a comeback for you. Some of you, your pain ulipitia ni kwa sababu mungu alikuwa na kuvuta. Ulikuwa karibu utoroke, umkimbie, utoroke kanisa, lakini mungu akakushika, akakuregesha. So some of you, you went through pain, but God purposed it for a comeback. For a comeback. Hmm? For a comeback. Wengine munge chukuliwa na adui na muende kabisa. Amen. It's a comeback. Tell somebody it's a comeback. And if it's a comeback, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. Kama ni dhambi, mungu wa mekuzamehe. Hallelujah. There is no sin that God cannot forgive. And as in this church, we are not condemned us in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God will help you to break out of every captivity. I say to somebody, the Spirit of God will help you to break out of every captivity. In the name of Jesus, every captivity is broken in the name of Jesus. When the Lord turned the captivity, it was like a dream. For some of you, it will be like a dream. I say as a servant of God, by the month of June, to some of you in this church, it will be like a dream. Because God will have done great things. It will be like a dream. It will be like a dream. God is stunning the captivity of his people. In the name of Jesus. Na shetani ame ajaruhusiwa kushika kitu yako yote. In the name of Jesus. I declare to somebody what you sowed in tears in 2023 you will reap with joy in 2024. Hallelujah. Make a shout to the Lord in Jesus' name. Make a better shout to Jesus.